Welcome to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette, with your host Steve Garrett, MC and DJ at one of the largest Corvette weekends in the country, Corvette Fun Fest, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 40 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. You can listen to Corvette Today on all podcast platforms like iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Anchor.fm, Pandora, Stitcher, Audible, and many more. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say Alexa or Hey Google, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. Also, visit the Corvette Today website. It's corvettetodaypodcast.com. You can also sign up for Corvette Today notifications, updates, and information at corvettetoday.ck.page. And don't forget, join the Corvette Today Facebook group. We have over 2,300 members, and I'd love to have you as a member as well. Corvette Today is now on YouTube as well. You can watch your favorite Corvette Today podcast by searching for Corvette Today podcast and subscribing. First, I'd like to thank our flagship sponsors of Corvette today, MidEngineCorvetteForum.com. If you'd like to join a new vibrant forum that focuses on the new mid-engine C8 Corvette, it's free to join this friendly community. You'll meet a lot of fellow Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at MidEngineCorvetteForum.com. Also, a new flagship sponsor of Corvette today is CTR America. They're the OE supplier for chassis components for the C6 through C8 Corvette. CTR America also provides various aftermarket products like suspension and steering parts. They work with customers that have their own specs, unique designs, and requirements. The CTR Enhanced R&D process provides cutting-edge solutions, superior quality, and lightweight yet functional products, including EV products. CTR has brought to the aftermarket the same know-how developed as an OEM supplier. Visit the CTR America website and learn more at aftermarket.ctr.co.kr. Another new flagship sponsor of Corvette today is E-Tech. E-Tech is the expert and leader in custom flooring. Whether it's your garage floor, basement, patio, or front steps of your home, or a professional workplace, E-Tech is four times stronger than epoxy and comes with a 15-year warranty. There are hundreds of different patterns to choose from, and installation is completed in one day. You can walk on your floor in 24 hours. Call for a free estimate at 913-745-3732 or visit etechcustomcoatings.com. 913-745-3732 or etechcustomcoatings.com. I have my garage floor done with E-Tech and absolutely love it, and I know you'll love yours. You can see the pictures of it on my blog at CorvetteTodayPodcast.com. Also, a shout-out to CanadianCorvetteForum.com, welcoming Corvette owners from around the world. It's time to get the latest Corvette news and headlines with my buddy Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. As you know, Keith is a regular guest on Corvette Today. He's here twice per month to keep you up to date on what's happening in the world of Corvette. Keith, welcome back to the podcast. I am so excited, my friend, because this podcast marks the start of year number two of Corvette Today. You know, it's an amazing feat, and we always hear about small businesses fail within the first year of business. It's tough to get out there and start new things, and you've really taken this bull by the horns. It's the uh, go-to place for Corvette podcasting, obviously. I got to tell you that the number of people and the quality of people that you've had on this show are simply amazing. Yeah, Keith, we've been very lucky. You know, Harlan Charles, the product manager for Corvette, has been on twice. Taj Juchter has been on, the chief engineer. Kirk Benyon, the exterior design director. We've also had Tom Peters, who was the exterior design director, Derek Moore and all the people from the National Corvette Museum have been on, Dave Kindig from Kindig at Designs and Bitchin' Rides has been on, Corvette test driver Jim Miro, Peter Brock, who designed the C2 Corvette, also Ken Lingenfelter, Kevin McKay, the Corvette Hunter has been on, Reeves Calloway from Calloway Cars, and also Rick Malone, the lead instructor over at Spring Mountain. So we've been very fortunate, and I was so excited because you and I started our News and Headlines podcast in early September, and it's been going fantastic. 
it's so what seven months now that we've been doing this I, I get tremendous feedback from the people that have listened to this and they continue to listen to it every two weeks and obviously your podcast every week but the feedback has just been great and i really do appreciate those that have reached out to us and said that they like it obviously you and i've known each other for a while so it's easy for us to sit down and talk about these things and your guest list again a, a cornucopia of corvette personalities is just uh, an unbelievable achievement so congratulations again on your first year and may you have many more well thank you buddy and thank you for being a part such an integral part of corvette today let's start with our news section keith corvette today production update what's going on over there at bowling green they've been cranking out cars ever since the last official shutdown which was back in the first week of march we've seen them come roaring back again they are averaging around 182 183 cars per day last friday they crossed over the 11,000 mark so yeah it's just cranking right along right now and hopefully no more shutdowns we'll just keep working hard and see where it gets us but there's been some talk about where the model year is going to end i think we're still boating well for sometime around mid-july on that do we have any constraints on production as we sit right now it's interesting how they put this out. So a little over a week ago, they put out their first list of constraints. The only thing really is the carbon fiber pedestrian protection on the front grills. Those are constrained. Actually, one of the things that's coming back is a big item is the high wing is now available to order through your dealer again when you're placing a new order for a Corvette. Great. That's been a big thing. But the really interesting thing about that April constraint report in the production report was that Chevrolet told dealers that, hey, we've got 11,000 orders still to build. And And again, we think, wow, you know, that's obviously quite a lot. They've just built 10,000, 11,000 cars. So they're halfway through production at this point right now. Of course, earlier in the month, they put out a stop sale order, meaning that they don't want any more new sales orders to go into the system so that they can make sure that they accomplish the production for those existing orders. They don't want a repeat of 2020 where they had all these extra orders that they were trying to finish. I think they've got it well under control and in hand. So with 11,000, now 10,000 cars to build, that does put us right around mid-July as a potential stopping point, whether they go into two-week downtime like they've traditionally done for their summer break or if they just roll right over and go into the 2022s. That we'll just have to wait and see. That sounds good. And also, I saw that Zeus Bronze and Sebring Orange can no longer be ordered on a 2021. Yep, that's right. We knew this was coming. They had actually put out a final order date of 429. But of course, the final order date is Tuesday for this month's allocation cycle. And they did say no more Sebring Orange or Zeus Bronze. It is gone. So for anybody that had to add an order this week or coming up, no more Orange, no more Zeus Bronze. It's been a good run for those colors. Obviously, the Zeus Bronze was at the bottom of the exterior list. But Sebring Orange, I think, was ranked right around the fourth color. I know there's some people that are disappointed. There's some other colors that we've got coming up that I think that will definitely fill that void. Well, that looked good. I love that Zeus bronze. Mike Furman from Criswell Chevrolet showed a delivery of a Zeus bronze with a full Morello red interior. And man, that was just stunning. It looked great. Yeah, and you know, they've also got the pewter wheels. We just don't see enough of those, but that's obviously a very nice combination. So the people that do own the Zeus bronze, they're going to have a very unique and rare color. Absolutely right. Also, Corvette delivered over 6,600 cars in the first quarter of this year. That's a great number. It is a good number. If you think also that we had three weeks of downtime during that period, which equates to at least 2,700 vehicles, you know, in fourth quarter last year, they did 8,992, so nearly 9,000 cars. And so, yeah, that missing production is definitely reflected in the 6611 that was in the first quarter. So, again, they are doing just about as many cars as they can build in the day. If we can just continue on, we should see a nice, healthy bump there for the second quarter. Also, Corvette was the fastest seller car for the third month in a row which is great news yeah you've been watching this it is exciting and it's fun that when it's your cars you know at the top of this chart list most corvettes are on a sold order basis so they're already sold so when they do reach the dealer there's obviously a period where the car goes through pdi delivery and then before the customer gets it they are averaging right now about 9.4 average days to sell We knew it was a fast car, but it's also fast not only on the street, but in the showroom. And uh, we've seen that now for three consecutive months. And hopefully, I I bet it carries over to the fourth month in April. I was wondering, how long do you think this would really last? 
Well, there's a couple other competitors out there. There's a new Toyota RAV4, which is number two. That one's average sale time is 10.2 days. If I recall, the Prime is a hybrid. There is a huge demand for that car. There's a waiting list for it from what I've heard. So that's what we're dealing with. All these cars that are already sold as an order, obviously they're going to go out the door the fastest. Corvette, I think we're going to look at and see April is again the fourth consecutive month, but we'll just have to wait and see. That sounds good. Also, Corvette dominated first quarter sales with a 51% market share. That's unheard of. It really is. These are always the slides that Harlan likes to show during like the bash where Corvette ranks high above its competitors in the luxury sports class. And so we're talking the Porsche 911, the Porsche 718, Mercedes AMG GT, Mercedes Benz SL, Audi R8, Nissan GTR, obviously the Ford GT, Acura NSX, and the BMW i8 are all in that luxury sport. These are North American sales and Corvette just dominates that market. We've always seen it do that too. So it'll be interesting to see as we we go into the year and we get some more models maybe we'll get a z06 obviously next year we might be looking at the e-ray that'll even add more to that it's pretty exciting time for corvette absolutely and speaking of that luxury sports car segment corvette had the highest loyalty in that segment of any model well that's no surprise to us corvette people love their cars they order the new ones as fast as they can i don't a big surprise for anybody Absolutely right. Keith, let's take our first break. And coming up in segment number two, we'll talk about Corvette racing and also rumors in the world of Corvette on Corvette Today. American Hydrocarbon, your one-stop shop for custom interior, exterior, and engine bay items for your C4 through C8 Corvette. We can help you create a custom look for your Corvette with carbon fiber or 10 different color patterns and styles. We've served customers in over 28 countries all around the world. Whether it's a custom-made engine cover for your new C8 mid-engine Corvette or custom-made C4 interior upgrades, American Hydrocarbon can help you transform your Corvette into a best-in-class show car. Our products have been featured in VET and Corvette magazines, so give us a call. 813-476-5638. That's 813-476-5638. Visit our website at AmericanHydrocarbon.com or email us at pat at AmericanHydrocarbon.com. Let us help you make your Corvette the car you've always wanted it to be. American Hydrocarbon. Hey, honey, are you awake? Mm, I am now. I can't sleep. Since turning 50, I keep dreaming of a red door and a blue door, somehow knowing there are only choices for retirement. Okay. Through the red door, we outlive our money. We have to rely on our kids. We're stuck on a fixed income. It's terrifying. Yeah, that would suck. But through the blue door, our money outlives us. We retire on our terms. Our kids stay our kids, not our caretakers. We make work optional. Yes, that's much better. That's what I want too, but what do we do? We call True Wealth and Company at 913-653-8783. They specialize in helping successful people make work optional. They're our fiduciary Blue Door personal wealth managers. Hey, where are you going? It's 3 a.m. I can't sleep. I'm going to check out True Wealth and Company online at retirewithtrue.com. That Blue Door is going to be our retirement. 913-653-8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth and Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. This is the Corvette Today podcast with Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. We keep you up to date on what's going on in the world of Corvette. In segment number two, we're going to talk about Corvette racing and rumors in the world of Corvette. First, we'll start with racing. Keith, Mobile won the grid. Recap Corvette racing at Sebring with a very cool video. Yeah, they do this. They're obviously Mobile One's a trusted partner of Corvette Racing and the factory fill for factory Corvettes going back to the 90s. So they do these recap videos. They do driver interviews. So it's a great channel to follow, Mobile One The Grid on YouTube. So they do this recap and it shows the C-Ring race. And the more I watch that, I watched it a couple times as we posted it on the website. But it's just such a, you know, I'm mad about it, Steve. I'll tell you right now, I'm mad about <laughs> it. Because we were leading that race. We should have won it. And BMW played the spoiler. And the more I look back, I see how leading up to that accident with eight minutes left, accident, not really, but as we're leading up to that time period, the driver behind Antonio was flashing his lights just constantly, just being, trying to be a pain in the butt on it. I really just think with BMW only being in four races this year, 
I think their only goal is going to be the spoiler. Obviously, I think that Corvette Racing will win enough points throughout the whole season that we'll be the champions again. It's kind of a hollow championship. We're you know, basically racing one Porsche and then four times a year these BMWs. But I just see them being the spoilers. I watched this Mobile One The Grid video and obviously we had trouble with the number four car early on. But boy, that number three car was just zooming for a victory when they got taken out. I don't want to say it was on purpose, but there was obviously a little bit more of a push there than uh, probably was warranted at that time period. I agree, Keith. I was disappointed to see the end of that race as well. So I'm right there with you, buddy. It's just so frustrating. And actually, uh, Antonio had commented on the flashing lights. He says, over in Spain, when somebody flashes their lights, we don't move over. Even Jordan Taylor did a spoof video on it where he pretended to be the C8R's rear tear lights. It's like, <laughs> why are these people flashing at me? Uh, pretty funny video as well. See right now in our rear view headlights, looks like we're moving on. Absolutely right. Also, Sports Car 365 said that GM Racing is going to make a decision about LMDH and also GTD Pro in the next 45 days. Yeah, so the LMDH is going to be the top category, and all these manufacturers look like they're moving to it the Porsches, the Ferraris, the Audis. The question for GM Racing is, who do we want there? Do we want Corvette Racing to be going against these cars and then also going for the overall win at Le Mans? Or do we want Cadillac Racing, which has this history of racing prototypes already, to be in that position? They're telling us about 45 days, and I was looking at the calendar as we were talking, Steve, and I think that's going to be right around the Bell Isle race in June. Okay. So uh, they might make an announcement sometime around then about the future of the car. Either Corvette Racing will go GTD Pro in the new IMSA category next year, or we'll see Cadillac or we'll see Corvette do the LMDH and go for the top prize at Le Mans. Very interesting. I'm anxious to see what decisions are made by GM Racing. That also flows into our next story. Porsche and Ferrari have agreed to race their GTE spec cars for another year in the WEC, the World Endurance Championship over in Europe. So they've got four cars in that class. So let's just say that if something doesn't work out in favor of Corvette Racing for GTD Pro and IMSA, they do always have that fallback of putting a car over in that other series. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they'll get some accommodations to race in GTD Pro and IMSA. Obviously, that's where their customer base is right now. But there is a plan, and we'll be hearing about it probably sometime around Belle Isle in June. That sounds good. I'm anxious to hear what happens. Also, our newest Corvette racer, Nick Tandy, tests out a new radio-controlled C8R at Silverstone. That would look really, really cool. You know, when you got some time on your hands with COVID, some of these guys did their projects. Some of them built sim racers. Nick Tandy built an RC racer that is a model of his car. This thing zooms. It goes like 70 or 80 miles an hour. Wow. I'm anxious to, to see one of those go and, and maybe even have some fun with that. That'd be a blast to drive around. I'd love to have one, buddy. That's for sure. In the rumors category, Keith, digital paint samples have been seen now for the three new colors for 2022. Talk about those for me. So this is pretty interesting. On yesterday's news that Sebring Orange and Zeus Bronze would no longer be available, we've got a couple of sites that we check around that, that kind of gives us an idea of new colors and what they are. And one of these sites is an automotive touch-up paint site. These manufacturers get their paint codes. They're submitted. Obviously, these other manufacturers make paint touch-up kits for vehicles. And so it gives us an idea of what these colors might look like. So as I was going through yesterday, I was looking for, obviously, 2022 colors. And we have the RPO codes from those new colors. And of course, I found them under a listing for the GMCs. The three colors are there. So the Amplify, which is going to be the replacement for orange, the Sebring orange, it's Amplify non-metallic. It's a really a kind of an interesting color. Again, these are digital paint swatches, so they're not all that realistic looking. But it does give us an idea of what the color is going to look like. And think of the orange, kind of like the rapid blue, where it's a bright color, but it's not very metallic, as it's called the non-metallic tint coat. I think that's what we're going to see for the new orange. Okay. So it's not a matte finish. It's just a non-metallic finish. Correct. It's, it's still bright. And again, I draw the comparison to rapid blue, another pastel color, very bright in the sun, very bright in the shade as well. I think that this orange is going to be like that. Okay. And then for the other colors, they originally called it caffeine, but this touch-up paint site calls it Galactica Metallic. But it's a darker brown. It's almost like a deep, rich, dark brown compared to the lighter brown that was Zeus. Okay. So we're going from Zeus bronze to more of a coffee color. Yeah, it's a much darker and richer color, it looks like. Okay. And the third color is Hypersonic Metallic. This is the new gray. We've got a color comparison to the Dark Shadow. And the Dark Shadow seemed to have some blue or some purple in it. This one doesn't. This one has just a little bit more silver in it. 
So I actually took that swatch and I put it up against the number four C8R in silver or gray. It's close. I don't know if it's an exact match, but it could be that the new hypersonic gray is more similar to the gray on the C8R. Got it. Well, I always love seeing the new color, so I'm anxious to see exactly what comes out and exactly what those names are, too. So we always tell people these are just representations digitally created before you really draw any conclusions. Let's wait till we see fully painted cars under the sun. That's the best way to judge for yourself, whether that's going to be the color that you want for 2022 or if you're going to go with one of the more traditional colors. It's interesting, these colors out there, I think they're falling into line with what they thought we'd be. Right, right. Also, the Tonawanda number one team badges are available for sale now at your Chevy counterpart. That's a really cool badge to have on your engine. Well, and it's such a throwback to the 60s and 70s where the big blocks ruled the boulevards. They were making engines out of Tonawanda. So these are these Team Tonawanda stickers. Originally, we heard about them in 2019 when GM President Mark Royce went to the plant and he's like, I want that sticker on that engine. Yeah. It's not really a sticker. It's actually a metal plate. They had a little hiccup, I guess, getting it ready for 2020, but these have been on the engines since 2021. I think back in November or December is when they started. So now you can order them. If you've got a 2020 that doesn't have that and you want that, you can order it from your Chevy dealer. Let's see. I'll give you the part number here. It's 127-07-374. And I think they're only like $16 or $18. You avoid the Corvette tax on that and get yourself something that's a really cool badge for your engine. Very nice. And finally, we have some new events coming up for Bloomington Gold. Isn't that right? Yeah, this is always a great show. It's a little disappointing that they're not at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway anymore just because that's such a great venue for driving and everything. True. But by being at Lucas Oil Stadium, which is where the Colts play, everything's indoors. You've been in Indianapolis in July. It's hot. It's muggy. They've had bad weather the last few years. So now everything's mostly inside. It's just a really cool venue. So yeah, they've got writer Steve, who's been going to these since he was a kid. He's like, yeah, beer garden. So that's one of their new events. <laughs> <laughs> and then they've got the Bloomington Gold Theater, where they're going to be running videos of past shows and different events. Oh, wow. That these Bloomington Gold cars have been part of. So I think that's really cool. And then they've got three different driving tours that they're doing as well. So they're really trying to make it a great show. And if you're in the Midwest in June, June 18th and 19th, Bloomington Gold would be a great event to take in put that on your calendar right now buddy let's take our final break and coming up in segment number three we're going to talk about the lighter side of corvette on corvette today vetfinders.com is the internet's original corvette classified ads website with classified ads starting at just 25 dollars, and every ad runs until your corvette is sold if you're in the market for a corvette vetfinders.com has over 500 corvettes for sale from all around the usa and canada and covering all eight generations visit vetfinders.com the internet's destination for buying and selling corvettes that's v-e-t-t-e finders KC Trends Motorsports has been the Midwest's largest custom wheel superstore for over 25 years. They specialize in C8 wheel fitments from the top brands in the industry like HRE, Vossen, ADV1, Avant Garde, and more. They ship daily from their Kansas City location to all upper 48 states with the best pricing and inventory in the country. Need tires? KC Trends Motorsports has you covered. They have tires in stock from Michelin and Pirelli. Plus, they can help you with a customized wheel and tire combo for your Corvette to truly make it one of a kind. And if you need wheel ideas, no problem. Simply go online to kctrends.com for their car and wheel visualizer. See the wheels on your Corvette before you purchase. Also, there's dozens of wheels and tire combo pictures to look through online to spur your imagination. And their expert staff is there to help you with wheel and tire sizing and offsets for your C6, C7, and C8 Corvette. Visit them online at kctrends.com. See them on Facebook and Instagram. Make any Corvette a one of a kind with KC Trends Motorsports. Call them toll free, 877 962 5200. KC Trends Motorsports. And now, back to Corvette Today with your host and my husband, Steve Garrett. 
Hey, thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. Keith Cornett is here from CorvetteBlogger.com. Every other week, we keep you up to date on what's going on in the world of Corvette. In this final segment of the podcast, we'll talk about the lighter side of Corvette. Actually, this isn't quite the lighter side, Keith, but Paul Corner, one of the master Corvette technicians, did a great series on changing out an engine in a C8 Corvette. Talk about that. Yeah, so he's a GM certified technician up at Key Chevrolet in Middletown, Connecticut. We all know him from the different events, Corvettes at Carlisle, Blues and Gold. He goes to the Mid-America show. He's done seminars at the National Corvette Museum. Paul, just a great guy to know and just a wealth of knowledge. So he had a customer that had a bad engine in his C8 Corvette. He introduces it by saying, what we've got here are pieces. And you can see pieces of engine parts that were blown through these holes in the bottom of the LT2 engine block. Wow. Pretty catastrophic engine failure. We didn't realize just how much was going to be involved in this. We see all engine swap, and then, you know, a few days later, it's done. That's generally, for us, on the outside of the dealer service bays, that's what we see. So Paul, though, does these little quick videos, and he uploads them to his Facebook page, The Corvette Mechanic. is just a wealth of information shows us exactly what he's doing. He talks about before we even do the engine, we do all this preparation work. He's doing homework on Sunday nights, looking at what he's going to be doing the next day. He'd order new parts. He'd show us off these parts as they came in and then kind of give us a little foreshadowing of what might happen. And we saw that. One of the questions was, if there's a catastrophic failure at the bottom of the engine, why are you changing the intake, which is on the top of the engine? Right. And he talks about reversion and how parts might get up in there. And sure enough, he takes off that old intake and he slams it on the ground and you see all the stuff come out. Just you can imagine, you know, somebody putting that on an engine and then having that one blow. Just so much information that he's able to process and then provide to us and just to give us that insight. Over the course of two weeks, we followed along. He ordered the parts. He took the old engine out. He had to replace the wiring harness for that. Then he had to make everything back together again, get it in there. Of course, nothing fired up right away. So he had to troubleshoot that. A great little project to follow along and give us insight on something that we don't usually see. It's been a great series of videos, and it's a lot of fun to watch, even if you're not mechanically inclined to get you a little bit closer to that as well. So check that out on CorvetteBlogger.com. The whole series is excellent. Also, another premiere show, Keith, is Corvettes at Carlisle. And this year, they're going to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the 1996 Grand Sport, which will be very, very cool. Yeah, hard to believe it's been 25 years. The Grand Sport was just one of these special editions that has just continued to captivate people. Only a thousand of these cars were made. The Admiral Blue with the white stripe and the red hash marks on them. The owners of these cars are fanatics. I mean, that's the only way to explain them. We're good friends with Hutch and the people over at Grand Sport Registry. So they're working with Carlisle to do a special Grand Sport display at Corvettes of Carlisle. And they're bringing in John Heinrichsey, also known as the Hein Rocket. And he's the father of the Grand Sport Corvette. It was him that kind of led the push to do this Grand Sport. He owns Grand Sport number 001, and he's going to have that car there as well. So if you're interested in joining the Grand Sport Registry at Corvettes of Carlisle, we've got the link on our website, or you can go to grandsportregistry.com. That sounds cool. Also, Porsche is following the lead of the C4ZR1. They ran their new GT3 for 5,000 kilometers, averaging 186 miles per hour. Talk about that and how that ties in with the C4ZR1. So when the C4ZR1 came out, a group of people essentially ran that car at full speed for 24 hours. It set a record, and I want to say, and I should have looked this up because I knew you were going to talk about it, (laughs) Uh, but I want to say that it averaged somewhere in the 170s for 24 hours. So they only would stop for gas. They'd go back out and run this thing. And the track actually was actually a little sketchy. They were out in the wilderness. They could have had wildlife running across the track at some point, but they completed it within 24 hours. And that record stood for, I want to say, 15 or 20 years or so. So now we read the Porsche basically did the same thing as on their new car that they ran it flat out 24 hours, only stopping for gas and checking fluid. I remember last year I met with Doug Feehan in Corvette Racing when they were introducing the C8R. And that was one of the questions I had asked Doug is, are you out there? Did you race this thing for 24 hours straight? And he's like, no, we didn't really have to this time because of engine simulations. 
But we all know that engine simulations don't take into account the real wear and wear that happens on these engines. We actually have seen some problems with Corvette engines in the C8R a couple times. So again, the more you race, the more you're going to find out if they're stable or not. It's a good thing to do. And I'd like to see Corvette try to recapture that title because that stood for a long time for the ZR1 record. It sure did. That'd be really cool to see him reset that record. Also, this was a fascinating story, Keith. There's a blind Corvette racer that set the Challenge World Speed record in a C6. That was just amazing. Yeah, his name is Dan Parker. He lost his sight. He was, I think, a drag racer. Lost his sight back in 2012 when his 63 Corvette slammed into a wall. Regardless, the guy still races today. He's built his own C6 Corvette that's capable of 200 plus miles an hour. And there's a Guinness Book of World Records called Driving the Fastest Car Blindfolded. And of course, if you're blind, you don't need the fold. And he says that. So he's going to be trying to set that record, which I think stands right around 200 miles an hour. So his goal is to do 210 in his red C6 Corvette. If he does succeed, he will be the fastest man blindfolded. Very cool. That's simply amazing. I'm just not sure how he does it being blind but that's pretty darn amazing well one of the ways they do this is obviously on a track is difficult because you have to stay within the confines of the track and these speed records are set out at like bonneville where you could go you can veer and still get speeds and not worry about crashing into something it should be a safe venue for him and godspeed we hope he gets that record absolutely right our final story is pretty cool if you're a youtuber you've seen a girl named supercar blondie and she's a fan of the c8 corvette you know, when you've driven everything, and especially you've driven everything of the caliber of supercars from Bugattis and Ferraris and Bentleys and all these amazing Mercedes AMG supercars, you become used to that. So then when you get into a $60,000 American Corvette, what's the perception then? She had said that she had trouble getting a car from General Motors because they don't have any. She's based over in Europe, I believe. This one, this video, she was actually in Dubai and rented the car so that she could test drive it and do her review on it. So she comes back. There's a few things she doesn't like, particularly she doesn't like the great wall of buttons in the interior. But other than that, she's pretty much a fan of the car. She says she's a fan of the direction of the C8. I think as we get up into some of the more exotic versions, Z06, E-Ray, ZR1, ZR1 Zora, she'll be back and testing those cars as well. As an automotive reviewer, she has one of the largest channels on YouTube. I think over 6 million subscribers. True. So it's a big deal. She says she likes it. The video has already been seen by 700,000 people. So, I mean, it's getting a lot of play. That's wonderful. I'm glad to see that she likes it. And I think she is based in Abu Dhabi or the UAE or something like that. So it's pretty cool. She travels. She goes to different shows. And wherever she can get her hands on a car, you know, she does a great walk around. She's very knowledgeable and had some comments people didn't really quite know her. I'm like, man, you got to go to YouTube because she's seen it all and done it all. That's true. Well, buddy, thanks for being on Corvette today. We will see you in two weeks. And here's to year number two of our podcast together. Well, and again, congratulations on one year, Steve. We're looking forward to making the second year as great as the first. If we see you out there, keep waving. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today. And thanks to our sponsors, CTR America, who makes chassis components for the C6, C7, and C8 Corvette. Visit their aftermarket items online at aftermarket.ctr.co.kr. Also, American Hydrocarbon at AmericanHydrocarbon.com and KC Trends Motorsports at KCTrends.com. And don't forget E-Tech Custom Coatings at E-T-E-K Custom Coatings.com or call 913-745-3732. You've been listening to Corvette Today with Steve Garrett. If you'd like to contact Steve with any thoughts on the podcast or ideas for guests on Corvette Today, you can email him at stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. That's stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. Or connect with Steve on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using at stevegarrettdj. Thanks again for listening to Corvette Today.